Oh, shoot. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Monero with J-Man Speaks coming to you live and direct from our world headquarters here in Rochester, New York on Christmas Eve. That's right. Oh, fudge. It's Christmas. I got a green shirt on, so you guys can't see this in the Instagram world. Uh, but on the Facebook, it's hilarious because I have arms and nobody. Nobody, baby. So check it out. <laughs> check it out real quick. I got to put it. I got to put a jacket on so that I can get through this without being too distracted. All right. So uh, I see some of my friends on the Insta. You guys have a few people there. I know where you're from, but why don't you post in the comments on Facebook where you're from. If you've ever hosted a seller seminar before, you could also do it on the Instagram. Where you're from. Have you ever posted? On, I love to call it the. Anytime I say the in front of stuff, it makes me seem less... Uh, less educated. The Instagram, the Facebook, if you're on there, where are you from? Have you ever hosted a seller success seminar? I like that even better. Three S's. I love alliteration. I don't know if I love my Santa hat, though. I'm going to switch it up. What you think? What you know about going down? Oh, look at me. My hair all flat. I'm going to switch it up here. Here we go. I think this is better. It's hand knitted. Comes with a with a beard right here, but the buttons the buttons broke off when I washed the hat. All right, so we're talking about seller success seminars today, and I'm going to give you the steps and the blueprint. Uh, this is all part of the Rediverse that we're going to be doing uh, coming on January 3rd. If you don't know what the Rediverse is, I'll post it uh, in the comments for you. You're going to go to Reda dot jmanspeaks.com to get on the waiting list. Uh, but it's going to start January 3rd. January 3rd, we're going to start our first training. Uh, but all of the things that we talk about are going to be incorporated into the training along with predictive analytics, data to predict who's going to sell, and messenger bots. Okay. So the reason why I want to talk about seller seminars is because when you know who's likely to sell – you can then target them in many different ways. And one of those ways would be um, advertising, Facebook ad, an email, Facebook Messenger. Sometimes Messenger uh, is, is too direct and even an email. But what you can do... Hold on a second. Yeah. What you can do is, uh, let's just say, and again, if you're unfamiliar with J-Man's Lister Predictor... Uh, by Revaluate, what it does is it will tell you people that are likely to sell, right? So let's just say, oh, shoot, my lighting is off. Hold on. Hold on one second. Be right back. Okay, that's better. I had my, my uh, fluorescent lights on up top and not my LED lights. So if you guys want to see what's going on, I'll turn you around on Instagram. Boop. There you go. You see like you're on like you're on Facebook. It's like you're on Facebook, but you're on the Instagram. You can see what they see. You can see how my shirt is transparent. All right. So when you have uh, the list of predictor, it will tell you people that are likely to sell. And then what you can do is create triggers. And what I mean by triggers is within... Revaluate. You say when somebody reaches an 80, which is somebody who's likely to sell 80 to 100, they rank it one through 100. Um, most likely to sell 60 to 80 is likely 40 to 60 is like, eh, don't even target them. But 60 to 80, it could be something a little bit less aggressive. And then um, a little bit less aggressive and then, you know, get, get a little bit more intentional as they reach that 80 threshold. Uh, what some agents have found is when they reach the 80, sometimes they're already uh, listed. So they want to target them a little bit earlier. But what I would do, once you reach the 80, you create a trigger that then adds them to a custom audience. By custom audience, this is something that you do on Facebook. And you do a custom audience so that an ad appears that says, you know, uh, the Monero team is doing seller success seminars absolutely free virtually every two weeks on a Saturday. Okay. Oh, look, I got my 
my phone in there. Um, and so then it, you know, they'll be scrolling Facebook and they'll go, honey, look at this. J-Man's doing a seminar for sellers. We were thinking about selling. And then it's like, oh my gosh, I totally, um, <laughs> I totally had no idea. I'm just here for you. And it, it's a great way to kind of gauge their interests, you know, cause you got to come from a position of value in today's, um, you know, with today's modern consumer. It's not like if I know they're likely to sell and they hit that 80 threshold, I'm not going to call them and go, Hey, uh, uh, if you're thinking about buying or selling, give me a call. Uh, cause my, my prediction, uh, my, my data tells me that you're likely to sell. Nobody's going to like that. You could at the very least just call and have a conversation. Uh, but when you're putting together these seller success seminars, here are your steps. Number one, for those of you that are taking notes, okay? Number one, what you're going to do is make a list of all of your affiliates or vendors or people that you would like to have involved with your seller seminar. For me, that would be my mortgage person, the attorney that I work with quite often, my videographer and photographer, which are the same person. So for you, it may be two different people. My home stager. And then an extra bonus would be somebody who does home improvement and or a handyman and or a home organizer. They're different people, right? Because you could have a home stager or interior decorator. Again, those are also two different people. But a home stager is, you know, can come in and say, this is what you need to do. But if the person isn't good at organizing and prioritizing and doing the things they need to do, it's not going to work, right? So we actually have a, a professional organizer that we refer uh, that they can do all of that. Hold on one second, man. I am so easily distracted by little things. I'm going to zoom in so that you don't have my lights in the picture. But this is cool. I like this. Uh, you know, you should be transparent in, in, <laughs> in real estate. Uh, it's like the invisible man. All right. So you make the list of the people. Next thing you want to do is have a date and time that you can do this on a regular basis. So I think every two weeks would be good. Every week wouldn't, would be too often. Every two weeks would be good. Um, and, and keep in mind, we're going to get into this, but it's something that, you don't have to host one if you don't have anybody showing up. The old way of doing these, oh, home inspector, great, great um, home inspector would be good. Yeah, I actually have that on here, sorry. Um, thank you, Merlin. Also home inspector. But it used to be, we'd do home buying, home selling seminars. You know what you have to do? Do you know what you'd have to do? You'd have to rent a place, right? You'd have to, if you want, and if you want to do it in person, that's still an option, but a lot of overhead here and you need a lot more, uh, sponsorship to help subsidize the cost. Uh, we used to do it. There was a, a home builders association in our area. They had a great training area. So maybe if you partner with the mortgage person or partner with the title company, those of you who are uh, in title states, um, maybe they have a space already for free, right? It doesn't have to be huge. Your chamber of commerce, your rotary, uh, all those places are, are great uh, for you to host these events for little or no, no money. I wouldn't go to like a hotel or stuff like that because then you're going to be 500 to $1,500 to do it in person. But the reason why, and this is a, just another thing, another bonus of the pandemic, if you will, because um, I always like to look, look at the positive things that have come from it, is that people are used to being virtual. People are okay with hopping on a Zoom and it's less formal, right? I have to really be thinking about selling or almost ready making a decision to sell in order for me to get showered, get dressed, put my clothes on, you know, have coffee, do my hair, and then go someplace for a formal meeting. A formal meet, a formal meeting by somebody who uh, I believe is to be a salesperson, which everybody thinks we're salespeople, and that's why they don't, they don't really want to talk to us. So then you're less likely to get people in there, right? Because they feel like you can go in there, and you're going to strong arm them, and next thing you know, their house is listed. You're, we know that you're not going to do this if you're watching this right now, uh, but some people would. Uh, <laughs> all right. And, and so that's why I like the virtual better. 
virtual is better, less formal. And then maybe then you could do a second seller success 2.0 in person from the people that have already taken the virtual. Maybe that's something to talk about. Okay. All right. So you get, you make a list of all these people. The next thing you want to do as you're designing your seminar is do you have a listing presentation? Hopefully you do. Hopefully you, and we're not going to go into this right now, but hopefully you have a listing presentation that talks about what makes you different, right? What sets you apart from the competition? What is your unique value proposition? And that's part of what you want to incorporate into this presentation. It's not going to be about you though. It's going to be about them and how you or how they can prepare to sell their home, right? Don't make it like, when you hire the Monero team, this is what you get. It's not going to be a pitch. This is going to be educational. You want them to attend and go, wow. But you also want them to attend and go, wow, it's a complicated process. I should hire somebody. And that guy is not, or gal, is not so bad, right? So come from a position of value, a position of educating the consumer uh, and, and really helping them with it. All right. So let me see if I, this works over here. I'm going to go over here to my shared screen. Baby, go to the next scene. Here we go. Boom. All right. So the first tool I'm going to tell you about is Calendly. If you haven't seen Calendly, uh, I mean, this is what it looks like. I'm in my account now just to kind of live demo this for you. Um, I have Zoom set up. Some of you, if you've scheduled a virtual consult with me, uh, you know, like, that's where, you, that's where you go. I can share the link individually, or I could actually share this page, uh, calendly.com slash jmanspeaks, and you would get all of these options to schedule things. Okay, you view, the, each one has an individual page, and then you can even embed these uh, in your website, right? So if you had uh, take seller, you know, would you like to register for a seller seminar? You could have these already uh, in your website. I have a pro account, so I may have more features than you, uh, but there's a couple things that you want to make sure uh, you go to Calendly.com to start your account. You can do it for free, but you want to make sure that you integrate both your Google Calendar. If you're using that, you should. We always talk about it. Um, that's a good idea, Jeff. I'll, talk, I'll get to that in a second. Um, but set up your, your Google Calendar, and then you're also going to want to integrate your Zoom account. Okay, all of these make it much easier and create a system so that you don't have to do extra work because you don't want to be preparing for something that's not going to happen. It's a waste of your time, right? Um, I like to think positive and think you will have people coming to your seller success seminars, but maybe there's a week that you don't. And if it's not scheduled, you don't have to. Okay. What I mean by that is I don't have any virtual consults scheduled, right? Until I do. Somebody goes on there, they schedule a 15 minute one-to-one -one appointment via Zoom. It then pops up on my calendar and says, hey, you have a one-to-one -one meeting with Merlin tomorrow at, at nine. I didn't set the appointment. It was set for me because I already put my availability in Calendly. Just think about that. Boop, you have a seller success seminar for Saturday. Sweet, okay? And you kind of have it like a, like a standing appointment. But let's see, I'm gonna show you, walk this you through this quickly. New event type. Let's see what happens because I'm always at the mercy of the internet. All right. So when you hop on to Calendly here, so I did, it gives you the, the option of the event type. So you can create a one-to-one, -one, which is not what you want. You want uh, multiple invitees to meet you at one time. Um, you also have the option to do a collective, which is hold an event with another person, invitees, pick a time when you're all available, which it starts with me since I'm the facilitator of the meeting. Um, it's my availability. And then I would incorporate the, the vendors to be on with me. Or you could also create an event that's a round robin. So it could be like realtor first, uh, mortgage person, attorney, title, and have it go like that. I don't like that format either. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go here, hit create. You then are going to name the event Seller Seminar. Okay. Add the location. Go like this. 
Look at how smart this is. Zoom, because I already have all of those integrated, okay? Now in here, I'm not gonna go through and write all the details, but let's just pretend you, you're gonna have like a checklist for them to do. Um, Anita, we're talking about Calendly. I'm on Calendly.com right now. Um, and you can watch the playback on Facebook. So you're going to, in the description, what I would do is this is where I'm going to incorporate the bot stuff too. Or you, if you have some kind of uh, widget or something on your site to give them a CMA for free without any additional registration. Okay. Stop being annoying. You don't want to be the person that's like, Oh, if you give me your blood type and your DNA and your login and your email and your date of birth, I'll give you a CMA. Dude, that's why the tech companies crushed us is because we were still trying to be the keepers of information. Uh, so I have a certain, let's just call it uh, H-E-E -E dot Monero team dot com. Let's say that's the link to my uh, home equity estimate creator. Create the link there. Oh, man. Could have done this ahead of time, but... Hey, I had it open at a time. And then you insert the link. Okay, I'm not going to do that now. But you could have in there your home equity estimate or what you would call the comparative market analysis. You could have about us, have that go to a link on your website. Um, and then you could have a home seller's guide, which is part of what we also include with our bot and uh, the resources that we're going to be giving you th through the Rediverse. It is a, I want to say it's like a 60-page home seller's guide. 60 pages! Okay, again, I'm giving this all away to the potential seller. You know why? Because other people aren't. And when you start giving stuff away and say, oh, yeah, you want to you want to sell your home? Here's some information. And some of you are like, what if they sell it on their own? They're, they were going to anyways. There's nothing you can say or do. All you can do is really educate them on the value of what you bring to the table, and then they're going to go, you know what? We need a realtor. Okay? All right, so let's just work through this quickly. Um, event link, seller seminar, we can call it that max invitees in a spot. I mean, geez, you could, maybe I'll cap it at 50, right? You could fit 49 people on a screen, but I would not display the remaining spots on the booking page. You know why? Because if one person registers, you don't want them to go, oh my gosh, nobody else registered. This must be an awful event. I'm not going right? You just want them to register and be like, whoo, I got a spot, right? You put that in the verbiage, like limited space available. And then, you know, if you want to pick a color that's in line with your brand, that's fine. Maybe you want to pick green for De Niro. And you hit next. Uh, you then would go in and say, okay, I want this to be indefinitely into the future, right? The date range, the duration. Shoot, if you could do it in 30 minutes, I think the shorter, the better, right? 90 minutes is long. I mean, in person, it'd probably be 90 minutes. But I think if I could do it in 30. Uh, Jeff, I wouldn't use the Zoom register. So Jeff's question is, what about the Zoom registration page? And uh, I wouldn't use that. And I'll tell you why, because it's going to be easier. Um, you could if you didn't have Calendly, okay? Because watch this. I'm going to go, let's say it's 30 minutes. I want to get this done in 30 minutes. Okay. And then I'm going to come in. I'm going to say set custom hours. I then I'm going to go into, and if you want to do it once a month, right? It tells me what today is. I'm going to say edit date or edit all Saturdays. Okay. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to hit edit dates. I'm going to hit this day. I'm going to hit apply. Hold on one second. What time would you like to add? I'm going to do 15 minutes before, 15 minutes after. So that puts a buffer into your calendar so you can prepare. Maybe it's 30. I would probably do 30 minutes before. But again, this is just for demonstration purposes. Um, edit date. I didn't do the time. So I'm going to do 9 to 12 p.m. If I just want to clear, like have my morning booked out for this, or maybe I'm just going to do 9 to, to 11. Okay, so that means people can schedule in 30 minute increments 9 to 11 or maybe you just want to do 9 and a 9 30 and have it only be one slot available perfect and go through click next 
you then have questions that you can add for them, invitee questions. So it would be like name, email, please share anything you will help prepare for the meeting. Uh, this is where I would put like, please post any questions you have about selling your home. Think of the value here, folks. Think of the value that you're like, you have questions. We'll, we will cover that in the webinar. I promise. Okay. Less questions, the better. You don't want this to be a 12 question survey. Um, I would do name, phone number, email. I want all three. And then you would see where it says star. You make those, those required fields. Okay. Um, I might even make just, you know, please post at least one question you have about selling. Um, a home, selling a home doesn't have to be your home because they could be selling investment properties. They could be home flipping. They could be doing all kinds of stuff. Okay. Save and close. There's all kind of additional workflows you can add to this notifications, cancellation policy, confirmation page, um, and collect payments. This isn't going to be a paid webinar. You could make it paid if you wanted to do like five bucks or something, but I wouldn't. Um, so confirmation page, again, you can there's reminders and stuff that you can set in here. You can have them be uh, texted, like I think it's the day before. I have it I have it set up in my settings. I don't want to go through it now because we'll go down a rabbit hole. But you can have it set up automated uh, to receive reminders of all that stuff. Okay, I'm done. Go to like this, view live page. And I'm going to have to delete this so that it's not active on my thing. But I'll do that after. Okay, so... I can go like this and go, oh, let's see what's available tomorrow. Oh, Jeremiah says a 9 o'clock seller seminar, a 9.30, a 10, or a 10.30. See how wonderful that is? Now, if I went in and I scheduled this and I hit confirm, it's automatically going to create the Zoom for me. Awesome! I know. I had to find the right button. Let's go back over here. You guys with me? Okay. Ah, isn't that just that alone? You could hang up now and not watch anything else and that would be worth it, right? When there's green, there's life. That's right, Merlin. All right, so now let's the structure of it. And you can... Adjust this as you see fit, but some of you who've never done one, uh, you need kind of like a blueprint. So here's what I would do. What, what I have in my notes and what I've done in the past. Um, I would start with the market, right? Everybody wonders, how's the market? Oh, my belly's on fire. Uh, everybody wonders, how's the market? So I would get into the market statistics. And this is where, if you know ahead of time, um, you can kind of do your research from their name and their phone number, you can figure out where they live and give them very specific, like, oh, if you're in the 14626 zip code, here's your market statistics. The list price to sale price ratio is this. Your average median sale price has actually gone up 54.6% in the last five years. So, and then they're going to go, what? Right, right, right in the beginning, you got to draw them in, okay, on, on, on why they're there. But after I, I educate them on the market, and realistic expectations and how inflation is affecting the market and how we're starting to see it maybe correct itself in some parts of the country, depending on the price point, all of these things. I would then get into uh, that these statistics are based upon properties that are listed in the MLS, right? Because in their head, uh, when you start giving them the market statistics, it's going to appeal to the larceny in their souls. They're going to go, ooh, 54.6%. Wow. We can make a lot of money. Plus, we can do it without a realtor because they don't do anything anyways. They just put a sign in the yard. Yeah, let's do it, honey. So then follow up with, hey, uh, these all these statistics are based upon properties that are listed in the MLS. Um, our job as, or the job of a realtor, best way, to, better way to to um, to word it, the the better the job of a realtor is to cause the property to sell. And here are some ways that you can maximize your profit, okay? And then I go into all of the things that we do different, right? You don't say we. I would say, you know, make sure when you're going to interview an agent uh, to sell one of your most, if probably the most expensive asset you have or most valuable asset you have uh, in your life. And, and by the way, folks, the, the greatest way to build wealth in America 
okay? Uh, but you want to make sure that, okay, let's start with professional photos, right? And then I might have examples of uh, get with your photographer, go to a property that you have listed, or do this in the next property you're going to list before you do a, 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 your seminar. Take a picture with your phone, okay, of a room, and then have your photographer take a picture of the room with their their camera and do all the magic that they do. Then do a side by side, right? And say, look at here's the difference professional photography can make. I have an iPhone 13 Pro Max. Here's the photo. It's good, right? It's still it's good. However, here's my photographer's photo. Bam! And they're gonna be like, what? That's amazing. That's amazing. I'm like, thank you, thank you very much. And and I'm gonna do that again with the video. I'm going to say, but part of uh, what you should be doing when we're talking about video marketing, um, there's there's two ways that I do that. We do a video uh, of it coming soon, less than one day before it hits the market, because once I publicly advertise it, it has to be on the market within one business day, right? The law of clear cooperation. But we, we have a customized video marketing strategy uh, through social media, especially. Uh, you should be looking for an agent that's that's doing both. And here's why. Because I have agents that I'm connected with and your agent should have relationships so that other agents are looking for new listings that are coming on the market because inventory is low. We do a live video uh, before it hits the market to let both agents know and consumers know that the property's coming. But we still have a professional video videographer do a video, right? And then you're going to go into show them the professional video. If you're doing Matterport, even better, Right. Would you guys agree that people are shopping for homes virtually? Yes. I mean, you're you're on a Zoom right now, right? Yes. Okay, check this out. And then in the future, when we start talking about the metaverse, not the retaverse that, that, that I'm hosting, but the metaverse, people are going to be buying houses virtually. Just like that. They walk in. You grab a virtual, uh, like a Matterport immersive tour. <laughs> Hey, check out the house. We're in it virtually, man, with the Oculus. What? That's going to be the future. Okay. You say, but the future is now because we already do that with Matterport or make sure you have an agent that's doing that. <sighs> I would then go into multiple offers. Okay. And say, okay, let me ask a question. Let me just pull the audience, uh, you know, sellers in the room, potential sellers. Uh, let's say you put your house on the market and you get an offer. Fantastic. Now let's say you get a couple offers. Mm, maybe you can navigate those waters. Let's say you get 62 offers. They're gonna hear crickets, right? Um, oh, the Elizabeth Taylor's on. Hey, and Michelle, how are you? Um, so you say, they're, gonna, they're not gonna know what to do. Well, you want to make sure that you, you have an agent that's trained in how to handle multiple offers. The most we've ever had is give them a number. And here's some of the things that we look at. It's not just price, okay? It's not just price. It's terms and conditions. And lately, we have to deal with escalation clauses, and we have to do with what we would call appraisal gap coverage. And I would go into greater detail with that. Man, the, the entire goal of your seminar is to educate them on the process, but also demonstrate how like, yo, you know what you're talking about and they have to hire you to sell their home. Okay. So multiple offers, how that works, um, how you would evaluate all the different, all of the different, uh, offers that come in. Cause you want them to go 60 offers. Oh my God. I want to know what to do. Because if you choose the wrong one, that can cost you tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right, you choose the person that has a pre-qualification instead of a pre-approval, and they go a hundred over asking because your average sale price is five hundred. I mean, that's realistic. If it's five hundred and they go six hundred, that's not unheard of. Uh, but it doesn't appraise, and that person doesn't have the money to to cover the difference. So that hundred k over asking means nothing if it appraises for four eighty, and that person has no money where the person's second in line who had a pre-approval with 20% down with extra money that was willing to pay whatever the difference was, better, okay? Relative stories. 
Next, I would get into inspections, and that's where, like Merlin said, uh, home inspector. If you have a home inspector that you're working with, man, have him come and be on there. And these guys always they they get a lot of engagement because people don't get a chance to talk to them, right? And if he has photos to share of like the worst things he's he's ever seen, uh, or and or deal killers. Um, that's what I would talk about, right? The importance of a pre-listing inspection. Pre-listing inspection, what's that? Well, we want to make sure that, you know, when we do cause the property to sell, if somebody does a home inspection, you're going to say, well, everybody's going to waive their home inspection. You know, maybe you encourage them to do one because you've already done one and you know that the house is great. Uh, I always, there's always a number, like we we recently we took one, it was, it was 17,000 more than the next offer that did not have an inspection. And the seller was like, what's, well, they're going to do a home inspection. I'm like, well, you, you did a pre-listing inspection, right? Yeah. You feel like there's any issues going to come up? No. Okay. Do you think if something came up, the extra $17,000, you could remedy that problem? Well, yes. I mean, it's got to be a pretty big problem if it's $17,000. And let's keep in mind, uh, them not doing a home inspection does not mean that you're not supposed to disclose latent defects. If there's a structural issue, if there's, you know, things that you know about that could cost tens of thousands of dollars and they don't do an inspection, you don't tell them, you could still be sued later on. Okay. Especially New York state folks. So make sure you get it. Talk about that. The inspections, everything that's happened. Uh, deal killers besides the home inspection, things that can go wrong, appraisal issues, buyer loses their job, buyer gets cold feet. Right. And again, I would, I would give real life example. I had a transaction, uh, two months ago that right down to closing the, the buyer did their final walkthrough with their agent and the washer and dryer weren't there anymore because the tenant that was there took the washer and dryer, even though they weren't theirs and they weren't brand new. They weren't, they weren't like LG. They weren't anything like that. It was Crap, washer dryer. Let me keep it real. Okay. The seller said, okay, we're going to go. We'll go to the store over here. We'll get you refurbished, washer dryer, 500 bucks. We'll have them brought in. Same one, same model, everything. They were like, nope, we're going to cancel. Okay. Now you're saying, but they can be sued. Yeah, they can. And once you talk to an attorney, they're going to say, well, what needs to happen? And I'm not an attorney, nor will I play one on a live stream. They will say, what needs to happen? is that uh, we have to put it back on the market, we have to sell it again, and then we have to see if there is any damages, meaning is there a difference in price from when you resell it? Because to hire an attorney could cost you five, 10, 15 grand just to sue somebody for a couple thousand dollars. Would it make sense? Okay, depending on where you are and in, in, in your, in your laws. So let's say this property falls apart, buyer walks. Agent's like, they're not coming back no matter what. Not even if we give them like $2,000 credit. They were just, they're over it. So we put it back in the market. Guess what happens? We sell it for more money. We sold it for $9,000 more. Um, so there are no damages. The seller's like, well, can we sue the other people? I'm like, no, you're in a better position now. You should send them a thank you note. Okay. But my job as a seller's agent is to always stay cool, give them their options, let them make the decision, and then that's my time to shine, baby. Right when when it hits the fan, uh, as a seller or a buyer's agent, that's really when you can demonstrate your expertise in real estate. Okay, deal killers. Uh, next, oh, title issues. So if you're in a title state, uh, or if you're an attorney state, doesn't matter. Attorneys uh, in our area usually ha have title companies, and they can talk about title issues because people don't understand. What is a title issue? What can happen if it's an estate? And you know, all the rest of the things. Um, and then I know that some of you who are watching in your part of the country, you guys don't even do surveys or survey maps, which to me seems we do a survey and every property gets updated with every transfer. Um, and there's issues that can be there, right? Boundary line agreements. We had one where a barn was five feet over the property line because it, it was a family plot and then they subdivided it, but they didn't do a good job. And then they built a barn over that property line. Cause who cares? My brother Joe lives next door. Well, they sold the property, it moved over to brother Joe's property. 
And now my client had an issue where they had to buy 10 feet of land by 50 feet just so that the the property line went around the barn. Yeah. It's great negotiation. But these are all issues that can come up. Next, the mortgage. Have, the mor have a mortgage person talk about the differences between pre-approval, pre-qualification, how the appraisal process works, uh, issues that can come up with an appraisal if it's FHA or conventional, health and safety hazards, all these things that we should take care of before the appraiser comes in so that they don't have to then come back and reinspect that property. Home stager, this is, and again, I'm putting some of the more sexy things towards the end uh, of, of my seminar because I want them to kind of, kind of stay there. Um, home stager towards the end, and I would have them, again, have, here's a, a vacant property. Here's one that's been staged by, you know, Jeremiah staging. Look at the difference. And sta home staging, according to the National Association of Realtors, uh, is one of the things that will get you over a 100% return on your investment. It's actually a 318% return. So if you spend 150, 300 bucks, it's definitely going to be reflected on your sale price or your list price to sale price ratio. I mean, you watch HGTV, don't you? Yes, I do. Well, don't those properties look great? Yes, they do. Well, that's why you should make sure that you're working with an agent that has a home stager as part of their team. Okay, and that home stager also has a professional organizer. Uh, and if they're an interior decorator, that, that could be different. Makes sense? You want your, all of this is just piling it on. All the things we do, all the things we do, all the things we do. And photos and video at the end. Again, I like the videographer, but then also show them statistics. If you have like the analytics on the back end of how many views you get on your on the Facebook, um, and, and if you've done ads, have the results to show that. Here's the difference that a targeted ad can make. Look at the additional exposure. If you have an agent that's not familiar with social media and how it works, uh, it, it could be critical to your success in the future, right? Social media is where it's at, along with video and, and the predictive analytics. All right, do we have any questions? Okay, I'm waving at the people. I'm going to come back over here. Boop, boop. That's right. I got my Santa hat on today. Um, I don't see. So I understand it's Christmas Eve and you guys don't have any questions. Uh, Merry Christmas Eve, Billy. It's weird that your photo is not coming up. I don't know if you didn't give permission for that. But this is what you want to do. Seller success seminars, okay? Plan it all out. If you need help, um, again, I'll put it in the chat or the comments. It's reta.jmanspeaks.com if you want to get on the waiting list for our Retaverse. It's Real Estate Tech Advantage. Uh, very energetic, really stupendous education. Ah, yeah, I just said it. The Retaverse, uh, that starts January 3rd. The emails will start to go out probably Monday uh, with all the information but we're going to train you on how to do this along with messenger bots, along with uh, data and predictive analytics and tie that in with a, a really robust CRM so that you could be having lots of listings in 2022 because that's what it's all about. I love my buyers, but sellers are where it's at if you want to maximize your time and live the good life. Mm, 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 mm. All right, I don't see any other questions. Uh, Chris, hey, Merry Christmas to you too. Let's see what we're gonna. It's do. cold outside. I'm gonna finish with this song here. Keeps it's called warm. Tomorrow we is Christmas. Can't spend the night underneath the mistletoe, and I've gotten you a present that I put I under the tree. Mind. Tomorrow it is Christmas. falling down and the storm is on its way but as long as you're around everything will be okay cause all I want to do is spend this holiday with you tomorrow it is Christmas the first for me and you I longed for this moment to in a cabin out of nowhere Just us and no one else I've decorated everything To be perfect for this week 
Everybody has a great Christmas. Another Happy year went by. Appreciate you for supporting us in 2021. The is this time? Is it ever since July? I've been happier than I have ever been. It's safe to say that my love for you is true. Tomorrow is.